Richard Krause. Hey, movie lovers, it's May 6th, just 20 days till my birthday. I'm just saying, mark it down on the calendar. There's about a thousand movies opening this weekend, and I'm going to do my best right now to tell you about a few of them. Of course, the big movie, the one that everyone's talking about this weekend, is The Bang Bang Club. Actually, I'm kidding. It's Thor, the big superhero movie directed by Kenneth Branagh. And I have to tell you, Thor is a whole lot more fun than you would imagine a superhero movie directed by Kenneth Branagh was going to be. It stars Chris Helmsworth as the muscled superhero who gets thrown out of his realm down to earth, his superpowers stripped away, where he meets and falls in love with Natalie Portman before saving the earth and then going back to his realm to save that realm too. This movie is positively Shakespearean. Uh, Kenneth Branagh has added some really nice touches here. All of Shakespeare's universal themes are well represented from love to death to daddy issues and everything in between. Uh, and Anthony Hopkins is along to class up the joint a little bit, although he chews the scenery so much it's as though he hasn't eaten in a month. But if you're someone who's read the comic books, if you know the mythology, you'll probably have a lot of fun here. It sags in the middle. Natalie Portman doesn't do this movie a whole lot of favors with the love story angle. But other than that, the beginning and the end of this movie are a whole lot of fun. But take some earplugs. This thing is really, really, really loud. It's thunderously loud. Uh, also opening this weekend is Something Borrowed, a much different kind of movie. It stars Kate Hudson and Jennifer Goodwin as best friends. One is a bubbly blonde, the other one a brooding brunette. They're polar opposites. The only thing they have in common is that they both love the same man. There is infidelity, there are secrets, there are revelations, uh, there's some dancing. There's all the kind of stuff that you expect from a romantic comedy that has a bit more than usual uh, tinges of drama in it. Gotta tell you, this movie doesn't work particularly well because uh, it strays from the romantic comedy formula, that's a good thing. But where it strays, it doesn't quite stray far enough. It's a movie about cheating and infidelity that kind of cheats or treats the cheaty cheaters as the heroes of the story. And frankly, that didn't work for me very well. So this one just gets a marginal um, uh, recommendation from me. Next two movies, The Beaver and The Bang Bang Club, they kind of sound like porno movies. But they're not. The Beaver is one of the best dramas to be released this year, and it's a movie that you've probably heard a lot about already. It's been the talk of online since it was announced that Mel Gibson was playing a man who talks to a puppet. He's a severely depressed man who uh, finds the only way of communication that he has is through a hand puppet. It sounds kind of silly, but once you see it, once you get involved in the story and you get to know the characters, I think that this is something uh, that you'll find compelling. It is directed by Jodie Foster, who is also one of the co-stars and Mel I gotta say I'm judging the art not the artist here is awfully good in this movie there's a reason why he was one of the biggest movie stars in the world uh, for about two decades but he doesn't quite steal the show the show is stolen uh, right from under Mel by uh, two young actors Anton Yelton uh, who we know from the show Huff who plays Mel's son and uh, the girl that he falls in love with Jennifer Lawrence who of course was nominated for an Academy Award for Winter's Bone recently uh, both are really terrific they bring a real naturalism to this movie that uh, is a little bit out of place with the kind of fanciful aspects of the rest of it but it really grounds the story and gives you something to hang on to this is good stuff The Bang Bang Club not so much The Bang Bang Club is a drama about photographers uh, taking pictures in war-torn South Africa. I gotta tell you, there's a great story to be told here. I'm just afraid that this isn't it. Ryan Felipe, Taylor Kitsch add some eye candy to this thing, but it doesn't really work as well as it should. Uh, finally, the last movie opening this weekend is called Palm Wonderful Presents, the greatest movie ever sold. It's Morgan Spurlock. You remember him from Super Size Me, and he's back this time with a documentary about product placement in movies. And I have to tell you, the idea for this movie is great. He set out to fund the entire documentary by using product placement. It is a fascinating idea. It raises some interesting ethical questions. Uh, he's got some great interviews with Ralph Nader and people like that in the film. I just wish there was more insight here. Morgan Spurlock is an entertaining guy. We like him, which is a good thing because he's in about every frame of this movie. But he doesn't often supply as much insight as I want. At the end of this movie, it just seems that the uh, the end result is that he says, well, you know what? Marketing works. That's why people do it. You know what? I wanted a bit more from this movie. So Palm Wonderful presents the greatest movie ever sold. Clever idea, but doesn't quite work in the execution. We'll see you again next week. Richard Krause.